Hello, I'm Melissa, and today I'll be talking about F2Py and how this tool can be used to put Fortran and Python code together. I work at Quantsight, and Piero Peterson, who is the original author of the F2Py tool, is my colleague there. First, I'd like to say that scientific computing is not just data science. I know that many people at SciPy know this. But it's not obvious for a general audience what is there beyond data science. This might make it difficult to imagine why other languages would be important or relevant, but scientific computing is much more than that. For example, we can talk about numerical weather, ocean and surf prediction, climate science, computational fluid dynamics, aerodynamics and many other domains where having fast linear algebra operations written in a high-level language closer to English than machine code would be desirable. As an applied mathematician, I have worked with numerical optimization and the numerical solution of large-scale linear equations and discretized differential equations. For those problems, not only do we need powerful techniques and algorithms, we also need powerful languages that are suitable for the treatment of large problems and can work fast. Unfortunately, sometimes that means scientists and researchers are stuck. Either they can accept slow code and give up on solving big problems, or they can try to learn a fast language like C or C++, which are notoriously unforgiving and can lead to bugs and problems that researchers don't want to deal with. Enter Fortran. This is an old quote, but the most surprising part is that the only inaccuracy is that it's 2020 and we're still talking about Fortran. Fortran is a mature, robust language used in many applications in industry and scientific computing. Many of the applications I pointed out earlier depend on Fortran code, including some fast linear algebra libraries used by machine learning frameworks and the benchmarking of the fastest supercomputers in the world in the top 500 list. Looking at this slide, you may remember some old Fortran code, maybe Fortran 77, that you saw sometime in the past, and that looked ancient. Maybe it was a fixed form file with an 80 column limit or written in all caps. Fortunately, this is not necessarily what we're talking about here. We're thinking of modern Fortran. Although many people still think of punch cards when you mention Fortran, in fact, Fortran is a general purpose parallel programming language that excels in scientific and engineering applications. Originally called Fortran for formula translation in 1957, it has evolved over decades to a robust, mature and high performance oriented programming language. It has seen many revisions, but remains somewhat backwards compatible, which is both good because modern compilers can understand old code, but at the same time can make people write code today as if they were in the 70s. For example, since Fortran 90, which came in the 90s, we've had dynamic allocation of memory and support for pointers. Since Fortran 2003, it is possible to use object-oriented programming in Fortran. And Fortran 2008 introduced co-arrays, which makes the language natively parallel. But many people don't know this. So, what makes Fortran relevant today? As a language, it supports array computing by default. This means slicing, masked arrays, and other high-level array operations that you might know from NumPy 
are also native to Fortran and are efficient and easy to use. It is also made for scientific computing, which means readability. It is called formula translation for a reason. Translating mathematical models and formulas is usually straightforward. It definitely has a smoother learning curve than some other popular languages for scientific computing, such as C or C++. There's a growing general purpose library ecosystem around Fortran, including new LLVM based compilers, such as Flank and L Fortran, and a standard library, which aims to have a scope similar to SciPy in Python. This is also fueled by a growing community, which is not yet comparable to the Python community, but which is striving to establish itself. There's even a Fortran.io web framework written in Fortran, so it is very much alive. Unfortunately, many of the strengths of Fortran can also be its weaknesses. Fortran can be seen as a domain-specific language. Despite being technically a general purpose language, it has been designed for science, engineering, and math applications, involving arithmetic on large structured arrays. For other purposes, it won't be your best choice. This makes it a niche language. Fortran is used by a relatively small number of people. This makes it harder to create a community around it or to have educational and technical documentation discoverable on the web, for example. It is a compiled, statically typed language, which by itself makes it not as flexible for prototyping as Python, for example. A standards committee is responsible for leading changes in the language, such as new features. Because of the nature of other open source languages and ecosystems, a comparison makes changes in Fortran seem slow. And this can be seen as a lack of focus on the user, as they don't feel that they are heard or that they can participate in building the language. Fortran also offers a minimal set of built-in types, most of them numerical. It lacks common data structures, such as lists and dictionaries, for example. To use them, you would need a third-party library to, or to implement your own. So, what is F2Py? F2Py started as an attempt to glue fast Fortran code and flexible Python code and enable high-level features, such as interactivity and plotting, to existing research code written in Fortran. It is now a part of NumPy and works by creating extension modules that can be imported in Python as regular Python modules. It can be used as a command line tool or as a module. It is a dependency for many important projects in the SciPy ecosystem, including the SciPy library itself. And it can be used to wrap Fortran or C code into extensions for Python. How does it work? F2Py reads the Fortran source code and parses the interface of any subroutines in this module. Then it compiles all the source code and builds the extension module in C using the Python C API. This extension module containing the wrappers and the compiled Fortran routines can then be imported as any other Python module. You can see in the example here, I have a subroutine called fast reverse that aims to reverse the first n entries of an array A. You can see that this is a high level language. Of course, there's declaration of variables, which we're not used to seeing in Python. But other than that, the array operation itself 
works with slicing and indices very similarly to what you would do in Python using NumPy. Some differences are interesting to observe. For example, in the second line, you can see an implicit none command. If you have heard a little bit about Fortran, you know there was an ancient way of declaring variables, or rather not declaring them, where the type of the variable would be decided by the first letter of its name. Of course, we're not using that, which is why we always include implicit none in every file. Also, you can see the intent keyword there. This is supposed to tell the compiler which variables are going into the subroutines and which variables are coming out of the subroutines. As you can see, A is an array. It is an in-out variable. This means that you will receive the value of A on entry to the subroutine, change it within the subroutine, and then expose the new value out. Fortran subroutine parameters are passed by reference, which means that their value can be changed inside a subroutine and the new value will be available outside the subroutine. So this is something you need to be careful about. Once we have our subroutine ready, we can then use the f2py command line tool to compile the f module module into a C extension for Python. Now you can open your Python console and import the module you have just built with f2py. In the example, I have an array which is created with the data type of float32. This is because we have declared the array A in the Fortran file as a real variable. So you have to be careful about declaring compatible data types between Fortran and Python. After that, we can just call our subroutine and we can see that it works. It actually reverses the first two elements of the array A as expected. It is also possible to generate a signature file from the Fortran source code containing the interface to the subroutines you want to wrap. This is particularly important if you can't edit the source code or are using Fortran 77, since it does not support the intent declaration necessary for the correct handling of parameters in the wrapped subroutines. The signature file with an extension PYF sometimes needs to be modified by the user so that F2Py sees the correct signature of the Fortran routines being wrapped. The signature file is then read and the source code of the extension module is generated in C using the Python C API. In our example, we are using the F2Py command line tool to generate the fortran.pyf signature file. You can see that the signature file is very similar to Fortran, so it is readable and very easy to edit. When building extension modules, F2Py uses NumPy Dist Utils that supports a number of Fortran compilers, not only GFortran or GCC. Currently, F2Py supports calling Fortran 77, 90 and 95 modules and C functions from Python. Although not all features from Fortran 90 and 95 are supported. It can access some Fortran data from Python and can also do callbacks, which means you can call Python functions from Fortran and C. It generates basic documentation strings for the wrapped functions and modules and can also wrap C libraries. C 
So what's missing from f 2 pi? Derived types and Fortran pointers are currently not supported. This is a feature that many users have demanded in the past and are still interested in right now. It is also necessary to improve the character and string array support from the time when NumPy didn't have Unicode string support. F2Py needs maintenance. Having no official maintainer for quite some time has caused some regressions and lack of testing for new features, and this needs fixing. And finally, documentation. Some of the features of F2Py are not detailed in the documentation, and some of the documentation is obsolete. In particular, signature files need their own documentation, as many issues filed to the NumPy repo end up being a problem with signature files. What are the next steps for F2Py? This is a call for contributions. There are currently very few people working to maintain F2Py. We would like to change that. The Fortran Lang community is growing, but there is still much more to do to modernize legacy Fortran code. F2Py should not be a barrier for people looking to use the latest features of the language to interface with Python. This requires a lot of work, but can be done. We would also like to improve integration with other tools and compilers, in particular L4Tran. And finally, having support and communication from other packages that use F2Py as a dependency would be ideal since we want to understand what features people are missing or can be improved to ensure F2Py continues to be useful and is more reliable and efficient. To summarize, F2Py is not dead, but it would be nice to have some help. Thank you.